I did do the sublimation on Hey y'all, it's Jess from Hobby Jobby Creations and today I am going to do a video on, well it's going to be a soul dedication video on how to do my stickers. So I do the stickers just like this, um, where they start out with matte sticker paper and then I put the um, laminate over top so that they have that shiny appearance, that glossy appearance, sorry. Um, so yeah, I do a couple of these, I also have some smaller um, but yeah, so today I'm going to do a dedicated video to show y'all how I make the stickers. So I'm going to show you from Cricut Design Space to printing to laminating, cutting, all that. And then I'm also going to show you the cut settings and how I actually make those cut settings in Cricut Design Space and so that you can save them and use them in the future for other projects. I did do a project today that I will be showing y'all uh, here in about a week or so, um, it is, I've had a lot of people ask me how well the sublimated 651 decals hold up as far as weather on a vehicle, you know, just outside in general. So we're going to, we're going to completely see how that plays out here in the future. So that video is going to be coming soon to y'all so that y'all will have that for reference. Um, because I never want to show y'all something without showing y'all the bad side to it. I want to make sure that y'all see the whole thing all the way around. That's what For Science is for, and that's why I love my For Science video. That being said, this video is going to show you guys how to make your stickers with the lamination on top and your sticker cut settings. I also want to make sure that I put in my shameless YouTube plug. Go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel, please, and leave me comments, feedback, whatever's on your heart to tell me. Let's try not to be too mean. I'm pretty sensitive. Okay. But anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so these are the materials that I'm going to be using. This is going to be my sticker paper. I get this on Amazon. It's relatively cheap. It comes with 25 sheets and it is matte and it's for inkjet printer. So I'm using, and it's for laser printer as well if you have that. But I am using an inkjet printer. And then also for my lamination over top, I am using these Avery laminating sheets. Um, you do not have to have a lamination machine for this specific kind. I also get this by the roll on Amazon. I will leave links in the description. Um, I can find this by the roll on Amazon and it's still relatively cheap, but I did find this in my local store. So I'm pretty sure you can find this probably in your local Walmart or anything like that. But like I said, I like it because if you don't have a machine, which I didn't before, I do now, but I didn't before. So if you don't have a machine, you can use this because there is no heat required for this. So you can literally just put this on and scrape it down um, with your little squeegee tool. So it's, it's very easy to use and you can use it without a machine, which is what I love. Okay, so first things first, we are going to do the settings because I know that's what a lot of people are gonna come to this video for, so I'm gonna handle that first. So what we're gonna do is I'm on my canvas on Cricut Design Space. I'm going to come up to these three lines up here and I'm going to go down to manage custom materials. Then I of course am going to select my machine and I am using the maker. Alright, then all of my materials are on this list. So from this list we're going to go and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna hit add new material. Okay, right here it's gonna say new material name. So for my material, since I've already got this saved in as laminated stickers, um, for purposes of the tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and name it YouTube. Okay, and then we're gonna hit save. Now, from here it's gonna ask us how much pressure we wanna do. Now. Full disclosure, I have watched tons of other people's tutorials. Um, I like my channel to be a one-stop shop for y'all, so that's why I'm doing this tutorial as well. But, so don't <laughs> don't come for me for the number that I choose, but it's just 292. 
I don't know why, so don't ask me. That's just the one that I have seen so many other people use, so many other people tell me to use. Whatever reason, 292 is the magic number. So we have it on 292. And then up here, it's going to ask you right here where it says off. It's, it's basically asking you how many times you want the Cricut to repeat the cut. So you can have it repeat up to nine times. Some people choose to have it cut twice just to be safe. Um, for me, with the materials that I use, it always depends on each separate person, their materials, their machine. You know, it just depends on what's right for you. For me personally, I always just say off because one, just the once over cutting usually works just fine for me. Like I never have trouble pulling them apart or anything, but I am just saying a lot of people do put two times because they like to be safe. They like to make sure it cuts all the way through, but I just do once. After we've set all of our things here, oh, and fine point blade obviously is what we're going to be using. Um, in case you were wondering, that's just telling you what tool you're going to use. You can select fine point blade, D point blade, rotary blade. I leave it on fine point blade. So we've got our name. 292 is our pressure. I I am choosing to only go over it once, so I left I left the repeat off, and then we have the fine point blade. And I apologize if y'all hear the ruckus going on in the background. I got kids and dogs running around, so I apologize in advance. But once we have this done, we are going to hit save. So now that we've hit save. We now have our material in here, so then when we finally finish our project, we're going to be able to go through our materials. We're going to be able to select it. It's going to have a star next to it so that we can make it a favorite and it's always going to pop up. Um, but yeah, so that is there and in your settings for good now until you delete it or whatever you're going to do with it. Okay, so now we are going to move on to actually making our sheet of stickers. I have already put in the two stickers that I have that I'm going to be making. So all I do with these is I am first going to make a square. I know a lot of people know this trick. I'm just going over it for those who don't. Now for this square, we're going to change its dimensions and we are going to unlock the shape. And then for the width, we are going to put 6.75 inches. And for the height, we are going to put 9.25 inches and I just shoved that all the way up in the corner there then I know you can see that it's standing in front of my stickers here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stickers forward and I'm going to well, I'm gonna move them to the front sorry and then we're gonna put them in front of this box okay and then I'm going to place them on here and what I'm going to do to be able to optimize my space, I'm going to make duplicates. So I already kind of have an, a template for this, so I already kind of know how these stickers fit on here. My whole sheet is made, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that box. I'm going to highlight my whole sheet and I am going to flatten that bad boy. So now we've got an entire print and cut sheet. So from here, we're going to make it. From the make it screen, everything's pretty much self-explanatory. We're not going to mirror and this is what our sheet's going to look like because it is a print and cut. So we're going to hit continue. We're going to select our machine. So when we hit send to printer. I always leave the bleed on for this situation because I want to make sure that I'm not going to get that white rim around it if the Cricut does not cut exactly where I want it to. So I'm going to leave the bleed on. I am going to make sure I have my proper printer selected. And then I'm always going to use my system dialog because that's where you're going to actually be able to adjust all your settings and get your best print quality. Now that my print settings box has popped up, and sometimes this pops up behind your Cricut Design Space screen, so sometimes you have to minimize it to see it. Mine usually pops up right up front real easy for me, so it's not usually an issue. Um, make sure that you once again select the correct printer. And then I always go to preferences to make sure that 
all of my settings are the way I need them to be. So for the sticker paper that I use, I just use plain paper. Um, I know that some of them you have to use photo paper, whatever, go off of whatever materials you're using usually has the settings that you should set your printer to on the back of it or in the directions somewhere. So mine always just says, I just use the plain paper setting and that always does the best for me. And then for my print quality, it says normal. I don't want that. I want best quality. If you set your print quality to best quality, I mean, obviously you're probably going to get your best quality that your printer's going to put out. Well, hopefully anyway. So after that, I'm going to check out everything else just to make sure everything is the way I need it to be. My paper sizing, um, because sometimes you can adjust it to legal letter, just depends on your printer. And then I just make sure that everything else is the way I like it. And it is okay. And then I'm back to here. Okay, so now that I have my materials loaded into my printer, I am going to select print. And then I'm just going to wait for that to print out and then we'll be right back. So now that we're done printing, we're going to come in here and we're going to select our material. To show y'all how to get it on your favorites, we're going to go over here and we're going to browse all materials. And then we are going to scroll and I believe we have to scroll all the way down. Oh, no, nope, not quite. Okay. So you're going to scroll down and it's going to say my materials. So right here is the one that we made that we called YouTube. And then we just set it as a favorite. So we're going to hit the star, but then we can also select it here. So we got a little green check mark there and then we're going to hit done. Okay. So before we're going to run it through our Cricut, we are going to actually cut our laminate down to size. Now, the reason I do this is because I don't like to cover the registration lines on my print and cut sheet. Um, some people just go ahead and cover the whole thing. I know there's a lot of other hacks. Some people use a crown over this. Some people put matte tape over this. Um, and some people use a Sharpie. So those are three different techniques. Um, they just trace over the line with a Sharpie, trace over the line with a crown over the, over the laminate. Um, or they will put a matte tape over this line over the laminate to cover up the glossiness because evidently the glossiness messes with the Cricut's ability to read these lines. However, I don't like to mess with that. So I cut my laminate down to size just to stay within these lines so that I don't have to worry about any of that. So to cut this laminate, I have my handy little Cricut cutter or kind of big, but anyway. Um, so... From here to here, I measured this out at about 6.75 on my ruler. Just go ahead, whenever you do it, just measure um, right outside of your design here, but within these lines if you want to cut it the way I do. For me, 6.75 is a good measurement. Um, and then lengthwise, we are sitting right at about 9.5. So we're going to do 6.75 this way and 9.5 this way. So we are going to go ahead and cut this laminate accordingly. So first we are going to go lengthwise and we don't need that piece. And then we are going to do our width. So now our laminate should fit just perfectly inside those boxes, but it's going to also fit over our design. So as I've said before, I do have a laminating machine. I didn't use to. So like I said, you can do this just as easily without a, lamin a laminating machine. You just have to, you know, place this over and use your squeegee just to wipe it down. Um, but what I love about these laminating sheets rather than the roll is that it's got this little piece that comes off. So it's going to make it super easy for us to apply. Okay, now I like to put him on there from the bottom up. So I just make sure that the bottom of my design is covered. Let me move this so that y'all can see a little more what I'm talking about. All right. So I like to make sure that the bottom of my design is covered. Okay, because my sticky is exposed at the top. That's why I take it from the bottom. And then I just make sure that it's covering. And you can kind of see through the backing on the laminate so you can you can tell that your design is inside of it 
Um, and so I'm just going to make sure I'm in the boxes all lined up. And then I am going to take it up here and I'm going to press him down. So from this point, if you don't have a laminating machine, you would just end up pulling this guy. And then you would just, you know, pull the sheet and use your squeegee all the way down like that. But for making this easier for me, I am going to run it through the laminating machine right quick. And if you are using a laminating machine and you are using this particular laminate, do not put it on hot. You do not need heat for this. Put it on cold. Now I'm going to pull this up just a little bit and I am going to feed this into my machine and then the machine is going to do all the work from here. Okay, so we are all laminated and glossy. That means it is time to put this guy through the Cricut. So we're gonna line him up nice, just to try and make sure we're setting the Cricut up with the best circumstances possible to have a really good outcome. And this is a Cricut roller. This is like my best friend when it comes to putting anything on these Cricut mats. It puts everything down super flat and I just love it. So now we have YouTube as our setting. So we're going to leave pressure set to normal because we set the pressure for what we wanted and we're going to put it through the Cricut. Okay, so I've loaded my mat. And a little tip that I was told by the people from Cricut when I was doing some troubleshooting is that in order to get the best print thin cut readout, a good idea is to try and make this area dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my curtains and then I am going to hold this little lid down over it just to increase the darkness so that the reader can have all, all the visibility of the line with no reflections or anything like that. So now my work area is a little darker and then I'm going to stand right here to block the light from that direction and then it should be a lot darker than it was. And I literally just do this because that's what they told me to do and I have been getting a couple better cuts from this. So that's the reason I do it. I may be just superstitious or whatever, but this is what they told me to do and this is what's been working. So we're just gonna keep with it. And just so you know, once he is done reading all that, I don't keep the madness up. I go ahead and stop and I reopen my windows and everything while it's cutting because after it's read it, you don't have to worry about that anymore because obviously it's not using the sensor. Okay, so now that we are done cutting, we are going to go ahead and weed it and I'm still usually pretty careful with this just in case we didn't get the full cuts. Um, but usually it's pretty good about this. If not, usually it, it kind of comes off like a perforation, but usually we're pretty clean. So now we can just take these off one by one and we have our stickers made. Yay! All right. And then we have custom, super easy laminated stickers that you can either use for your business products sell to clients, give to family, whatever you want to do with them. These are super easy custom laminated stickers that you printed off from your computer and cut with your Cricut. So we're all done here. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, if you like this type of content, if you want more tutorials from me, um, like and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and give me comments, feedback, ask me questions. I'm usually pretty good about answering those, but for now, I will talk to y'all later.